Okay, so we've already reviewed factoring, so I'm not I'm not going to spend too much time on that part, and I'm going to try and do both of these in one video, uh, and then I'll show you how this works. I guess you should actually already know because hopefully we've already gone over this in class. But um, our first one we have x squared plus six x plus nine. I want two numbers that when I multiply them, I get nine. When I add them, I get six. A3 and three work for that, right? Um, and this is actually a perfect square trinomial. I can rewrite this as x plus three times x plus three, which is x plus three squared. Now, that's the factoring part. Um, way back up at the very first step, we should have equals zero because we're factoring the left-hand side uh, which means we're not changing the left-hand side. That's why we don't do anything to the other side, but it equal, we're just changing the way it looks. So we have what we end up with is x plus 3 equals 0, uh, and then that becomes x plus 3 squared equals 0. And so we can actually take the square root of both sides. So let's do that. The square root of x plus 3 squared equals the square root of zero, which is pretty easy. It's zero. So we end up with x plus three equals zero. Solve, subtract from both sides, and we get x equals negative three. Um, that's the only number. So I mentioned brief, brief, briefly previously, I mentioned that if we uh, do b squared minus 4ac, if it equals zero, there's only one solution. This is one of those cases. Anytime you have a perfect square trinomial, um, it's going to be this case. So you only have one solution. So x equals negative three. That's the only number that will work for a. Okay, so b, not so perfect looking. Um, okay, two times negative fifteen is negative thirty, and negative seven. So what times? what equals negative 30, and if I add it, equals negative 7. Um, let's see, we've got 15 and 2, that won't work. 6 and 5, that won't work. 3 and 10, 3 and 10 sounds like it'll work. Um, we want to be negative, so we're going to go with the negative 10 and a positive 3. Negative 10 times 3 is negative 30. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. I'm going to re rewrite this with the grouping. I mean to, that's uh, fine. 2x squared minus 10x plus 3x minus 15. I'm going to factor out this side and I'm going to factor out this side. And I can get a 2x out of this side and I'm left with an x minus 5. I can get a 3 out of the other side and I'm left with an x minus 5. So we end up with x minus 5 times 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, so remember, we're not taking away our equation. All of these are equal to 0. And now we have two things that we can do. So you just need to notice that if this is equal to 0, then the whole thing is equal to 0 because of the multiplication, right? So multiple, 0 times whatever gives me 0. Also, if this side, I should point directly to that. If this side is equal to 0, then the whole thing goes to zero. So what we end up with is two equations, x minus five equals zero, and two x plus three equals zero. If we add five to both sides, we get x equals five. Okay, so there's one of our solutions. And then this one's a couple more steps. We have to subtract three from both sides, and we get two x equals negative three and divide by 2, and x is equal to negative 3 over 2, or negative 1.5, that will also work. And what we're saying is if we plug 5 or negative 3 over 2 in to our, our equation, it'll be true. It will equal 0. And on our graph, that's where the parabola crosses the x-axis. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you're able to see those steps and be able to do those. And that's it for this one.